Hi everyone and welcome to the ProBuilder 2.0 texturing tutorial and this will be just a quick overview of the texturing system in ProBuilder 2.0. We'll definitely have some more advanced tutorials coming out um, and of course as always the other time-lapse videos and such that you can see that are sped up and show some more advanced work um, but in this case we'll just jump through the basics uh, show you everything there is but not really get too in-depth on any of it. So starting out to jump right into the texture editing mode, simply hit J on your keyboard. And you'll notice the texture editor panel will pop up and the uh, mode icon will change to show, show the bricks here. So it shows, uh, lets you know you're in the texture editing mode. And just a note for ProBuilder 1.x users, you'll notice you do not have to select anything first and jump back and forth between modes. Simply hit J and move into the texture editing mode. Once you're in here, uh, a lot like the modeling mode, you can simply click on any face to select it. You can hold shift to select multiple faces. And if still holding shift, when you left click on a face, it will deselect it as well. So very simple. If you'd like to paint a face, as we call it, or drop a texture onto it or material that is, simply select it and then in the texture editor you'll want to choose a material to paint so you can use the standard material browser choose anything at all let's say we want to go with blue and with that selected it'll show in the preview window here just use the control shift and left click to instantly paint it right onto any face at all. The face that you have selected, or if you have multiple faces selected, so let's say I grab a couple here. With those faces selected, just hit apply and it will drop the material onto all of those faces at once. One thing worth mentioning is that you can use any materials at all with ProBuilder. There's uh, nothing special to it, so there's no worries about using uh, a special custom-built shader or something like that. It should work just fine, um, especially uh, things like Substance and such, which are great to use, will work just fine with ProBuilder, just so you know. So once you've added some textures, it might be time to go in and edit the UVs on these. So by editing the UVs on the actual mesh object, you can reuse your materials in a lot of different ways without actually editing the material itself. And that way you save on a lot of draw calls where one single material can be used in practically infinite different ways. So take a look at this. Let's say if I'm looking at this face right here, and I'd like to edit how the material sits on this. Now the first thing is that with this highlight on, I really can't see very well what's going on. So you can turn that off by clicking on the highlight toggle. And now it's no longer there. With this, let's go ahead and drop on a special material so we can see a little better exactly uh, how these settings will affect it. So I'm going to choose a material I have set up just for this. So I can see how it looks. Now the first couple options up here are uh, probably not going to be used all that often, but in certain cases they're just absolutely uh, crucial to have, so we uh, added them in there. We have the flip UV, uh, sorry, the flip U, and then the flip V, which is vertical and horizontal coordinates. Then the swap UV, the highlight of course, and then the uh, world space toggle. Uh, down below there we have the scale and the tiling, so you can use these to control exactly how the uh, the texture tiles on the surface, so I can set this to 3, say by 0.5 or something, and it will just change the tiling. Set it back to 1 so we can see a little more easily what's going on here. Another thing you can change is the offset, and that's basically the position of the texture. And before we change the numbers on that, there's a much easier way that we've added in recently to do this, and all you have to do is move it around with the handles. So this is a really handy feature for lining up your textures just right or just finessing them to a certain point. Uh, very handy and a simple way of doing it. Of course you can also set a direct value in here 
if you need to. I'll set that back to one just or zero just to be sure. Below that is the rotation, which you can use also as it sounds to simply rotate this however you like. And we'll also have this set up in the future so that you can rotate the uh, the texture around using the handle. Not quite yet though. Below that we have the fill mode and you have the default which is tile and normalize and also stretch. So tile obviously just um, tiles uh, the texture around which is what you'll use 99% of the time but sometimes you might need it to especially fill an entire face so if you click on stretch it will just as it sounds stretch to fill that entire face with the texture if you change it to normalize it'll fill the face with that single texture but it will also keep it from distorting in any way at all so that uh, we can see especially well on this large face here uh, that's rectang very rectangular. Um, it's cutting off a lot of it, but it keeps it from getting distorted. So various cases in which that is useful. Let's put that back to tile so we can see better. Down below we have justify, which you can use to set exactly uh, which edge it will line up with. Set our rotation back here so that's not... Uh, knocked off center there. So that's the justify mode. And then we have the uh, projection, which you'll generally uh, not want to change. Otherwise, like so, um, you can end up with some issues. Um, leave it on auto for the most part. If you know you need to change it directly, you'll probably once again know uh, which one you need. Um, but if it suddenly looks strange, something's broke, you can check that and make sure it's still on auto. So that's really it for the basics of texturing. Very simple to choose and apply any textures however you like and edit their UVs as well. So thanks for taking a look and once again we'll definitely have more advanced tutorials coming out. Check out those time-lapse tutorials or videos that will show some more advanced items happening and until then thanks for watching and see you in the next one.